Hello wine lovers, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my wine channel. I'm here on um, a special video uh, in preparation for the 2018 Bordeaux release. Again, this will be fairly specialized for our BC market, but I think there'll be some useful information for everyone. Um, so 2018 is a good vintage. I was fortunate enough to travel to Bordeaux pre-COVID. I did um, buy Entrepreneur uh, Futures and I actually did um, taste the 2018 vintage. I was also fortunate to be in Bordeaux for the 2016 vintage. Um, so um, on the 2018 vintage, um, it was a good vintage. There was, uh, it wasn't uh, uniformly uh, good. It was hot at the end. There was some um, uh, climatic variations in weather, um, but it turned out to be a great uh, vintage uh, all around. Um, 2016 was probably a better vintage, uh, a little bit slightly better vintage, but 2018 was a exceptional vintage, had some exceptional scores. I purchased mostly from the Pomerol region um, on the futures market and um, that's what I can say in, in general. And so this is a video for BC residents. We get a release every year and this is part one of this release. So um, because of COVID, it's how it's done in BC is that there is a um, two parts to it. So the first part is a pre-order session from September 3rd to September 5th. You can book certain wines and then um, that's a first come first serve. And I'm going to go through these wines. Part two, um, there's actually a release of the uh, kind of um, le less expensive wines on September 25th, and I'll go through that in a separate video. But I thought I'd get this out for people um, who might be interested in ordering. Um, I'm going to get this out. So uh, the deadline, I think, for ordering pre-ordering pre is September 5th, and um, you can only order once. So once you've made that selection, you can't change it. That's talk a little bit about the 2018 vintage. Again, it was a good, very, very well-rated vintage. You're gonna see a lot of great wines, but you also have to remember this was pre-COVID. And so um, if you go back, I know it's so hard to go back uh, pre-COVID, but at that time, the market was really elevating. Um, Bordeaux had a couple of, um, not as, in terms of the pricing, it wasn't as good and it was just coming back. Everyone was feeling good. The market was coming back financially. Everyone's coming back. And so the market was really picking up. So that really was a high point. Um, and going back, the 16 vintage was very highly rated, very well bought. 17 was um, okay year, uh, not terrible, but okay. And 2018, people were really looking forward to it. And so there was a lot of buying and consequently, um, the futures prices were expensive. And that's what you'll see in these prices today. The 2018 release prices in BC are quite expensive. And so I've got a couple of recommendations for different parts of the market. If you are a beginner and you're just getting into wines and you don't have a lot of money to spend, don't, this is not the vintage for you to buy. Um, this is what they call a collector's vintage. It's a vintage that collectors can collect, um, buy and perhaps resell to make money, okay? It, because what happens in a strong vintage is that you have, it, it normally takes those wines to be, they're very highly rated in terms of points, but they also take longer to, um, to kind of mature. So they're not really drinkable. Um, the top end wines are not really drinkable for 15, 20 years. Um, so you're better off, and you'll see, uh, for those type of uh, purchasers, you're better off buying 2017 or waiting for 2019, which that's the year when COVID hit, and that's when the futures in, two, in 2019 were with in, in, within COVID. So people bought the the futures market and and you know, retailers like the BC liquor store bought at a lower price, and hence they can sell it to you at a at a cheaper price. 2019 won't be as good a vintage as 2018. But these are what they call 17 and 19 are what they call drinkers vintages. That means for normal consumers like us who don't really care about uh, reselling our wine, it's really um, those are the vintage you buy. And I'll show you the pricing is much, much. Going back to my video about Bordeaux and 1855 classification system, 
um, what I said is the classification system was never meant for consumers in terms of to rate wines. It was meant for uh, merchants and negotiants to figure out the order uh, of where the, pr the pricing goes. If you follow that video, and this is the exact use of the 1855 classification system. Um, people have used it incorrectly, saying, well, it's very pompous. No, this is the whole reason that we need the 1855 classification system, because now we have pricing for all the wines, and then we can um, figure out which wines are better value than others. And based on their order in terms of their historical classification. So this is very useful for people like me who do collect wines and also to drink wines. I know what are its values. I can kind of equate this to the stock market. Like for instance, there's lots of great stocks in the world, Apple, Tesla, um, but they're not always buys. They might be too high. And that's what I'm saying with some of these wines. Sometimes, like in the 2018 vintage, some of these wines are just too high. They're just, you know, you don't need to buy them. Some wines are maybe haven't a fell, just like stocks are, you know, have a fall for some reason. They're buys. And this is what we're trying to pick up. Um, and that's what I talk about in terms of the classification system, figuring out at what time you want to buy things. This applies for um, consumers. Now, if you're a collector and you are, you know, or you are super wealthy, then that's a tif totally different ballgame. You just, you don't care about money or you're going to resell it. It's a totally different um, theft process. And I will kind of go through that also, but I'm dealing with mostly consumers who are buying wine for consumption. And in that situation, we're looking for value and we're looking for um, things that um, are smart buys. And that's what I'm going to go through with each of the wines in this in this um, BC Liquor Store. This video is pre-taped. Um, and at this point, it's a couple of days before September 3rd. So the booklet um, that BC Liquor Store produces, which is a beautiful booklet every year, has not come out yet in paper form, but it's online. Um, we also have the benefit in BC of having um, also some 2017 vintage wines still available and even some 2016 wines. So there's a couple of things that, that benefits us. One, we can have a choice of terms of the pricing of different vintages. And secondly, it gives us a very nice way of building up a vertical of a certain wine very quickly. And it's that's very useful for education. So I'm going to go through what they call the pre-order wines. These are the wines that you have to... Um, order online um, and pre-order on between September 3rd and 5th, then you can pick it up on September 25th. And I'm just gonna go through the ones that I think are interesting or have some comment on, okay? So um, P1 is, uh, in the book is Chateau Angelis. It's priced at $1,000 a bottle. Angelis is a great wine, but that's um, fairly expensive for this bottle. And so, um, Again, if you are a person that's a collector um, or you have tons of money, of course, go out and buy it. But to me, that's a little bit as an example of a high price wine, a little bit high for what it should be. Um, Angelis is the price of that. I wouldn't buy it at that price. If I was going to buy Angelis, I would have bought it um, in the futures market, which would give you a 30 to 50 by five, 30 to 50 percent discount. Um, and I I, I can't see you even making money on this, um, even if you would hold it like 15, 15 years. There's not a lot of money to be made on that wine. So uh, unless you really love Angelis and you've got tons of money, I would pass on it. Even a wine like Darmillac this year is, um, is priced at $125. Historically, I think that's quite high for Darmillac. And I can just check. The nice thing is I've got a re reference guide. I can check it from last year. Last year's Darmillac was 90 Five dollars and with 95 94 points wine spectator I'm not sure what it is this year um, but I can't see it being much higher than that and so um, I still think it's expensive for Darmelec um, and so for a drinkers perspective how I would think is well Darmelec is a wine um, that I would like to drink um, I don't think many people would know the difference between 17 and 18 in terms of vintage most consumers maybe wine really big wine enthusiasts would know which vintage is better but you're getting a savings of um, $30 over $30 just for a vintage so 
I'd take that savings. And this is why I'm trying to point out right now, some of these wines, 17 is a better uh, buy than 18. Um, next one I um, is P4, which is uh, Beausager de Faux Lagaros. I reviewed that wine. Um, I had that wine in one of my wine nights previously. You can look at that. Um, and it's a wonderful wine in great vintages. This is a great vintage. It's priced at $280 a bottle. Again, I wouldn't personally buy it at this price, but it is a great wine. And it does price very well on great years. And this is one of them. Um, Becherville at $200 a, a wine. Um, Becherville is a up and coming winery. It's, it's, um, I think it's third or fourth growth, but it's a wonderful winery. They just, I visited them and they just um, have replenished the whole winery. They're really going to make exceptional wines. It is pricey at $200 a bottle, but uh, it's uh, over 95 points this year for Wine Spectator. Um, great wine, a, a little bit pricey, but again, if you have the money, that's a great wine to have. Um, another great wine, if you have the money, is Chateau Canon. I visited the winery. I think it's now owned by um, Chanel, and um, they are doing magnificent wines. Um, they may uh, eventually be um, elevated to Grand Cru Classe A in Saint Emilion. Um, it's priced at two hundred and I think it's two hundred and seventy-five dollars a bottle. Um, it's got lots of quality, and again, it's not one of these wines I would buy off the top of my head, but if you had the money, I'd buy it. Uh, same thing with Chateau Canon La Gaffaire. I just had that wine against uh, Chateau Cheval Blanc. Um, it paired, it really uh, stood up quite well to it. So I would uh, look out for this wine too. It's $200 a bottle. So again, uh, it's a tough buy um, at that price um, for people that are you know beginning in wines and stuff like that. It's a great wine if you have the money. Cheval Blanc this year is $1,800 a bottle. That's, uh, we still have provincial tax on this and GST, which is another 15%. It's almost $2,000 a bottle for Cheval Blanc and it's something you can't drink for another 15 years. If you have money, go buy it. But if you don't pass up on this, um, it's, it's one of these wines that you're gonna um, spend a lot of money on and you're not even gonna drink. Um, so. To me, if you were really that big a Cheval Blanc fan, you should really um, look at the futures market. Um, yeah, and I can talk about that in a separate video. But again, we're talking about consumer drinking right now. A uh, wine like Clerc Milan is very popular. It's a Pauillac wine from Fifth Growth, $210. To me, that's too expensive. Um, and again, if you look at, uh, it's nice to get, be able to compare. Last year, Clerc Milan was, um, $150. Yes, it's a great, better vintage, but from a drinking perspective, do you need to spend an extra $60 on a higher rated wine that's going to take longer to uh, to mature? In my opinion, no. Um, people just want to drink wines and I would take that discount. And that's why it's so useful to have two vintages. We have these prices and that's why I'm going to recommend you buy some certain wines like Grand Puy uh, Ducasse 2017 which is on sale till September 5th so get out I thought I'd make sure I would get this video out P26 is La Consolant from Pomerol region I visited this winery I fell in love with this winery I hope to do a video on this winery in the future um, exceptional they are making exceptional exceptional wines um, crazy crazy good and um, it's at 475 a bottle I know it's a lot of money but I don't know if, if you will believe me, but it's still fairly underpriced compared to the quality of other wines. People haven't discovered the Consignon, and um, I think it will continue to appreciate in price. And this is one of those where I think there's some price appreciation that you can get. Um, with wines like Cheval Blanc, right now I think they're very, um, very high, and Angelis, they're very high in terms of their pricing. A, a wine like Le Consignon, I think. It's not as discovered and there's some room for um, uh, price movement upwards in the future once people discover how really good it is um, and I can attest to it I was at the winery I think I drank about 10 vintages with them I can see the evolution of the winery and they're making some exceptional wines. P32 is Duhart Milan, Milan 
Um, it's priced at $175 a bottle. And this is another wine that I think is a little bit got ahead of itself in terms of pricing. And histor uh, historically, it's probably on the same level as Darmillac. And you're getting Darmillac at $125. I still think that's expensive. Why is Duhart Milan so expensive and so popular? It comes from the um, Lafitte family. The label looks like Lafitte, but I don't think that's a good enough reason to um, price it at $175. So I would kind of stay away from that wine. Uh, another great wine that I, I tasted, um, uh, the 2008 uh, vintage at the winery was uh, L'Evangile from Pomerol. Love this wine, um, $575 a bottle, very expensive. But again, it's hard for you maybe to believe, but I think this is underpriced compared to, it's a really, really, really good wine. Um, and if you look at Angelis at $1,000, I'm not sure I would um, take that over a bottle of Lavangil, Lavangil, which is almost half the price. So that's why I'm saying it's, it's, it's got some value there. Um, same thing with Fijac, although it's a little bit priced um, a little bit to a high, higher price than I would like. Um, um, Gisor. So this is the other thing. If you look at my um, video um, on the um, 1855 classification system, there's a lot of Margot region wines that are in that classification system and have historically, over the 150 years, been very good wines. Over the last 30 or 40 years, they've been not as good. And so now they're coming back. And Gisor is one of those wines, third growth. It's a 95 point or 96 point rated wine this year by Wine Spectator. It's at $150. Great value. Uh, I know it's hard to say a, a, a $150 bottle of wine is great value, but I think it's, um, it's a third growth. So again, going back to the order, you've got Duhar Milan that's not has a has a lower rating you've got this wine which is actually a, a higher growth that's higher rated so why would it be lower priced because historically uh, the last little while it hasn't done as well but it's coming back and i think you're going to get some that's why i'm saying wines from Margot, actually relatively speaking are um undervalued right now and you can buy them and this is the use of the 1855 classification classification system which people I think a lot of times miss out. This is why we use the 1855 classification system. Um, so yeah, so this wine, Grand Prix de Cosse. Um, so the price uh, of it in the 2018 vintage is $100, okay? So that's, I think, a one point higher than the 2017 vintage. 2017 vintage was, I think, um, $90. Now it's reduced this month to $75. So I'm getting a wine that's one point less, but is $25 plus tax less and is going to drink earlier. Why would I not do that? This is a fifth growth wine set for $75. Um, and I think, again, Poyak region, these wines are somewhat undervalued. Some of these um, not as well known or not, have, does not have as, as much attention. Grand Prix de Cosse is a, historically a great wine. So um, you'll see my review of it, I did open it. Um, you'll see this glass and you'll probably, those that notice this is the wrong type of glass for Bordeaux. I'm not drinking Bordeaux, I'm drinking another wine that I'm gonna re review called The Hilt and uh, from um, California. And so that's why I'm drinking it. this, um, glass so um but uh i will be also reviewing grand prix uh the cost which i think you should go out and buy the 2017 vintage um it's interesting chateau lafitte is at 1600 dollars um again it's very pricey um but historically chateau lafitte right now is undervalued and it's hard, I know it's hard for you to believe that in terms of, um, you know, how can a sixteen hundred dollar uh, wine be undervalued? Historically, um, for some reason, Chateau Lafitte has gone into a bit of a lull in the early part of um, the two thousand and ten. Around there, it was the only wine everyone was buying at auction. That was it. 
and everyone wanted Chateau Lafitte. A lot of that was driven by the Asian market. Um, that's kind of calmed down a bit, but um, Chateau Lafitte is still the most recognized wine in the world. It's the most traded wine at auction. It's always got value. It's like a gold standard. So for some reason, the value has dropped a little bit, and I think it's a good time to pick up Chateau Lafitte. Um, 2018 uh, was a great vintage, and I believe this has got a special label. It's got a little balloon on it, and so it's got a little... Uh, normally, special labels for 2000, for Lafitte um, have a little bit more value. So um, Lafitte is one that I would say is um, under undervalued at this point, if you can believe that uh, historically. And so again, this is um, it's not for everyone, but for those who are um, looking for appreciation in wines, um, Chateau Lafitte is one that does not lose lose money very much. Okay. Um, next wine we're going to go to is um, Lieva Barton. Um, again, has had some great success over the last little while has been overshadowed by Lievo Lacasse for many years. Both of them are second growth. So as an example here, this year, Lievo Lacasse is priced at $550 a bottle. Lievo Barton is priced at $200 a bottle. They're both second growths. They're both side-by-side -side vineyards. So what you're saying is the winemaker or their, their, their management of wine is worth two and a half times Lievo Barton. To me, that means Leo Barton is a it was a reasonable buy. If you have the money, again, it's all about, you know, I'm not suggesting that anyone has to buy Bordeaux, but if you are going to buy Bordeaux and you have the money, these are good values. And Leo Barton is a relatively uh, good value in this situation, right? Um, a couple of other, this is my, probably the only wine I will pick up on that day. Um, it's P69, it's Marquis de Lame, uh, Becker from Margot. Um, not well-known wine. I think it's a third growth wine. Absolute superstar wine if you're talking about the 20s and 30s. So um, it's lost its reputation a bit. It's coming back. This has been a, a this was an exceptional vintage for Marquis de Lame, uh, Becker. Um, and unbelievable price on this is 120 dollars to me that's a steal uh, it's a 95 or 96 point wine there's no reason it should be priced at that price again we go to this comparison some of the other wines i've talked about um darmeliac uh or duhart milan 175 dollars not as rated as high as this is a higher rated higher rated ranking wine higher ranked um and it's what fifty dollars less. Doesn't make any sense to me. And so this is what we use the classifications for system for for the ranking and to understand value of wine. So to me, this is an underpriced wine. Now Marquis de Lame Becker doesn't always have great vintages. If you go back fifteen years, no, it was not a great wine. But they are in the Marco region producing some spectacular wine. So I would buy that for sure. Um, and that's one of the wines I'm going to buy. Uh, also P70, which is Marquis de Terme. I would think of that. It's not as good, I think, um, as um, Marquis de Lambecker. It's 93 points. It's okay, but it's, it's reasonably priced at $110. Not a bad price um, for a great vintage, 2018 vintage. Um, Mouton Rothschild, P74. Mouton is actually um, quite, has been a superstar over the last five years. So it's kind of at its high point. So I'm not going to say it's not worth it, but it is at its high point. They've also really made some great wines. Um, 2018 Mouton is to me a buy at $1,500. Why? Because they've got a special label again that wasn't announced, but they chose a Chinese artist. And if you look at the label, the artist um, did a um, the words Mouton in um, kind of did two Chinese characters, but inside you can see the word Mouton in there. It's really neat. That's going to be kind of collectible, and it's also a great wine. So um, I think this will be a sought-after label, and Mouton does that a lot. 
um, they have a lot of special labels which are sought after. Um, they've had um, all types of um, great artists like Picasso also has been, done um, their artwork. So this is going to be a special label and, and I think actually despite the price it's a good buy. Um, a reasonable buy. I, was, I won't say goodbye, but a reasonable. Buy. Sorry, I this video has gone on and on, but I wanted to try and go through as much as I could. Um, I'll just go through two other wines. Uh, P eighty five with Chateau Petrus. It is three thousand eight hundred dollars a bottle. I know it's a lot of money. If you have the money, um, it's always good to buy Petrus. Petrus is another one of these stand. Um, wines that does not depreciate in value it doesn't matter what vintage um anytime you can buy a petrus and i guarantee you this will be sold out very quickly because there's lots of people with lots of money and um if you if money is no object you wouldn't even think for sure you'd buy petrus if you were offered it um and then the last one i want to highlight is chateau rosin segla from margot region again i really like the value of margot at this point um and the other point I would make is go back to my other video of the August um, sale prices with the Bordeaux on sale. Um, catch them on sale. Like now that you know the prices of the 2018 wines, you're going to get a good deal with a 2017 that's going to be much drink, much more drinkable. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit uh, less in terms of the points. But if you're just drinking it, do you really care about the points or do you care about the um, wine that you're drinking? Um, and the other point I have, which I will highlight in my next video um, about the um, other wines that are coming out on September 25th, is that the 2017 Sauterne Vintage was better than the 2018. Uh, so you can, and the, some of the 2017s are on sale until um, September 3rd. So there's Rezac, there's uh, Toisy Vedran, there's uh, Coutet. They're all on sale and they're all like 95 points and above. So um, there's no reason to buy the 2018 if the 2017 is better priced and also um, better scores. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if you have any comments. Let me know if you have any wines in particular you want me to comment about. Um, and until next time, happy drinking.